This is the man in black. Here again to introduce Columbia's program, Suspense. Our distinguished star this evening is that delightful gentleman, Mr. Roland Young, playing as author of detective novels, who invented his best plot when his life was at stake. With Mr. Young to play his long-suffering secretary is Miss Peggy Conklin. A story by John Dixon Carr in a somewhat lighter mood than is our habit and called The Customer's Like Murder is tonight's tale of suspense. If you've been with us on these Tuesday nights, you will know that suspense is compounded of mystery and suspicion and dangerous adventure. In this series are tales calculated to intrigue you, to stir your nerves, to offer you a precarious situation, and then withhold the solution until the last possible moment. And so with the customer's life murder and the performance of Roland Young, we again hope to keep you in... Suspense. On a hot summer night in a village on the east coast of England, a famous writer of detective stories is dictating to his secretary... You have all heard of Mr. Gerald Hockstone, celebrated author of Murder on the Wolfpack, Aconite at the Admiralty, Who Shot the Prime Minister, and other thrillers which have held us past the midnight hour. You have followed the exploits of Pendleton King, diplomat detective. Gerald Hockstone lived quietly at deal with his friend Dr. Roberts nearby in case he should need medical knowledge. And his pretty, if somewhat pert Canadian secretary... Miss Patricia Phillips. Gerald Hopstone would be a happy man, even in wartime, if it were not war. You got all that, Miss Phillips? Yes, Mr. Hawkstone. Good. New paragraph? Yes, Mr. Hawkstone. At the head of the great banqueting table, comma, the Lord Chief Justice staggered to his feet, full stop. His face was a ghastly whitish color, and his eyes had become glassy. Is he drunk, Mr. Hawkstone? <sighs> No, Miss Phillips, the Lord Chief Justice is not drunk. Sounds pretty cockeyed to me. For your information, Miss Phillips, the Lord Chief Justice has just been poisoned with curare because he discovered the identity of the master criminal. Is that clear? Yes, Mr. Hawkstone. But I wish you wouldn't do it. Do what? Well, in the last four books, Mr. Hawkstone, you have shot the Prime Minister, killed the Lord Chancellor with an axe, poisoned the Home Secretary, and blown up the First Lord of the Admiralty. Why don't you stop picking on the poor government and murder somebody else for a change? The Lord Chancellor, Miss Phillips, was not murdered with an axe. No, Mr. Hawkstone? Definitely no. He was beamed with the great seal and found dead on the woolsack. And there's another thing, Miss Phillips. Whether you talk like this because of a dense vacuum in what we will charitably call your mind... Really, Mr. Hawkstone? Or whether you are really making out what you might define as heart cracks, I don't know. But I don't want any more of it, do you hear? Just as you please, Mr. Hawkstone. I, I... Oh, Lord, where was I? His face was a ghastly whitish color, and his eyes had become glassy. Sounds like me. All right. A single choking cry escaped his lips, comma, and his body crumpled to the floor. Full stop. New paragraph. With one swift stride, Pendleton King had reached the fallen man. Mm -mm. He can't have done that, Mr. Hawkstone. Who can't have done what? Pendleton King. What about him? Well, on the last page, you had him sitting at the foot of the table. So he can't get there in one stride. Unless you want him to sail across the room like a kangaroo. There are times, Miss Phillips, when I should like to poison you with curare and dance on your grave. <sighs> I was only trying to help. All right, change it, change it, strike it out. With hardly a second's delay, how's that? Comma. Pendleton King had reached the fallen man. Full stop. New paragraph. Quote. I feared it, comma. Close quote. He muttered. Full stop. Quote. Note the rigidity of the muscles. Exclamation point. Note the characteristic odor of you curare, which... Mm, that won't do, Mr. Hawkstone. Why not? Curare hasn't got any odor. Now, there, Miss Phillips, you've really gone too far. But I can't help that. It's true. If you will permit the small vanity, I am noted for the correctness of my medical knowledge. Who is murdering the Lord Chief Justice, you or I? You are. But you might murder him properly. Curare hasn't got any odor. I say it has. And I say it hasn't. Listen, Miss Phillips. 
I propose to settle this rather childish dispute by going next door and asking Dr. Roberts. Will that convince you? Ferrari hasn't got any odor. And anyway, the Lord Chief Justice wouldn't be mixed up in any such silliness as this. Silliness, eh? Yes, I said silliness. Read your evening paper. The Lord Chief Justice is sentencing some American gangster who got involved in a robbery over here. That's the sort of thing he really does. You're very fond of these gangster reports, aren't you? Yes, I am, because they're real. Real? Ha! Don't you say far to me. Merely remarking, Miss Phillips, with your usual ingenuity, you sidetrack the argument. I am going to see Dr. Roberts. That's not necessary, of course. My own knowledge of poisons is as great as that of any doctor. Doctor, far. And finally, kindly don't say far to me, either. When I return, Miss Phillips, I hope to find you in a better frame of mind. Please observe that I, at least, have been able to keep my temper. Excuse me. All right. Go on. See if I care. Excuse me, but... Uh, good evening, Mr. Hawkstone. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Roberts. Uh, may I come in? Of course. Mind the blackout curtain. My, isn't it hot and stuffy tonight? Rather close, yes. Is the um, doctor in? I'm afraid he isn't, Mr. Hawkstone. But I expect him back any minute. Oh, out on a call? No, I'm almost certain he isn't. Because that's his medicine case and stethoscope there on the table. I think he's just gone up the road to get some tobacco. Do, do you mind if I wait? Not at all. But uh, you will excuse me if I run along. I promised Mrs. Anderson I'd drop in there. It's her neuralgia again, and I'm terribly late already. Don't let me detain you, Mrs. Roberts. Go, go right ahead. I'm afraid you'll have to wait in George's consulting room. I've got most of the house dark so I could keep the windows open. You know which room it is? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, I could, I could find it blindfolded. Oh, uh, and I wonder if you'd take the medicine case and stethoscope and drop them in the consulting room. George is so careless, he lets them lie about anywhere. Medicine case? Stethoscope, yes. As a matter of fact, I've always wanted to hang one of these things around my neck like this. <laughs> <laughs> Look almost like a doctor, don't I? Good night, Mrs. Roberts. Good night, Mr. Hawkstone. See you later. Oh, so what I write is silliness, eh? And I don't know anything about poison. And I call her Miss Phillips instead of Patricia. Ah, here we are. Now, where's that light switch? Good Lord. Come on in, Doc. Close the door. Who the deuce are you? You want to keep healthy, Doc? Just do what you're told. Come in and close the door. Is that by any chance a revolver you're pointing at me? There ain't no cigarette case. I'm warning you. Well, I'm hanged. I've done it a thousand times in stories, but I never thought... Well, don't drop that junk you're carrying, either. You're going to need it, Doc, when you come along with me. Come along with you? Where? Just to see a guy, that's all. To see a... Oh, wait a minute. You don't think I'm the doctor? Now, look, Doc. I ain't got any time for gags, see? The boss says to bring you, so I bring you. There'll be a very sick man out there if you don't go. Yes, there'll be a very dead man out there if I do go. I tell you, old man, you're making a terrible mistake. Now, look, Doc. My name is Hawkstone. I live next door. I'm not a medical man, and Wait I never... Somebody's coming. Miss Phillips. Now then, Dr. Hawkstone, just look here in the encyclopedia. So you ain't a doctor, huh? That's done it. Just a real old-fashioned kidder, ain't you? Oh. Now, you keep quiet, lady. You know it's good for you. I know you. I've seen your picture. You're big Louie Miller. Very smart I, thing I'm you sure got here, Doc. I, I... Listen, Mr. Doesn't Hawkstone. Take it easy, Miss Phillips. Big Louie Miller and Slats Kelly. Slats Kelly is the gang leader. Well, we're supposed to be friends of this gangster who's on trial in London now. But I hadn't heard they were in England. No, lady. Neither has anybody else. No, well, for it. Who is this same Doc, you nice? No, she's my secretary. She doesn't know anything about this. She seems to know too much about it, if you ask me. Come on, lady. You're going with it. Going? Where? Just for a little ride, lady. Just for a little ride. <laughs> Far out from the village, in flat and miry swampland, where pools of stagnant water gleam under the moon, stands the old Rutherford house. It is a desolate place, 
and the track of Field Marshal Goering's bombers when they cross the coastline. But there are no searchlights here, and no guns. Only the heat on the glimmering marshes and the decaying, weather-boarded house as a motor car approaches. Drive straight ahead, Doc. Right around to the back of the house. And remember, I still got this rod against the back of your neck. As a matter of fact, Louie, I'm rather enjoying this. All except the murder. What murder? We ain't gonna bump anybody off. Maybe, maybe, maybe not you, old boy, but I am. Just wait till I get at your patient. I don't see how you can joke about this. I'm not joking, Miss Phillips. If Louie won't tell us what's wrong with the patient. Never you mind the patient, Doc. You just drive around here. Yeah, whoa. So. Right here. Oh. So this is the enchanted castle, eh? Climb out of here. Walk ahead of me over to that house. Come on, Mr. Lip. That's right, lady. You two, come on. Hey, hold on, Doc. Grab a can of this cleaning fluid here. You can help me carry it in. Cleaning fluid? Yeah, there's two cans of it. If I can carry one, then I need my other hand for this rod. Come on, come on. We ain't got all night. Get it out of the back seat. Professionally, this is a little out of my line of duty. What do you want with the cleaning fluid? The boss's suits get all messed up, so I clean them for him. I play nice maid and everything around here. Come on, now. Straight ahead. Stop asking questions. But you got this place blacked out, Louis. If the police don't get you, the air raid warden will. Forget it, Doc. We got this place so sealed up, you can hardly breathe inside. In here? That's right, lady. Go ahead. I'll close the door. I can't see, old boy. Which way? Here. Set that can down and follow me. You too, lady. Ah, right here, with the curtains hanging over the door. Now, I want you to meet the boss. So I open the curtain like this. Howdy, Doc. Come right in. Glad to see you. I've been expecting you. Glad to see you, old man. I imagine you're the celebrated Mr. Kelly. That's me, Doc. Slaps, Kelly, to you. Glad to see you taking this nice and friendly. Louis. What's the idea of bringing in the dame? I couldn't help it, boy. Oh? She says nice, see? She was with him. And she knew who I was. She did, eh? I don't know anything. All I want to do is to go home. Ah, that's all right, sister. She'll go home all nice and friendly. As soon as I've had a little talk with the doctor. A talk about what? Well, we're not what you might call comfortable here, Doc. Well, we've got flashlights, canned food, plenty of liquor, portable radio that works on a battery. So we managed to get along. You know what I mean? I said to talk about what? Well, that's it. That's what I'm going to tell you. We pulled a snatch, see? You pulled a snatch? You mean they, they, he means they kidnapped somebody. That's right, sister. You speak English. May I ask who was snatched? Well, I'll tell you, Doc, because it'll have you a big laugh. The guy we snatched was the big shot you call the Lord Chief Justice. You snatched? The Lord Chief Justice? We sure did, Doc, and his clerk, too. They're in the room right over there. Shut your trap, Louis. I didn't mean nothing, boss. I was only trying to... you hear me say such a trap? Okay. But, look, here, what, what was the idea behind this snatch? Well, I'll tell you, Doc. We got a pal, see? Well? Dominic Ferelli, his name is. He's up on a grand larceny rap, and Ferelli don't like Glimey Jails. He don't like him at all. Besides, the dirty little rat owes me 14 G. So what do we do? Snatch the Lord Chief Justice, apparently, but why? Because the mouthpiece back home tells me long ago that a man can't be sentenced except for the judge that tried him. And the Lord Chief Justice is the judge who tried Dominic Ferrelli, is that it? That's right, Doc. But it ain't the main thing. This Chief Justice is a pretty important guy, see? So, what do we do? We write to the cops and say, now look, we got the old bird in a place where you'll never find him, and if you want to keep things nice and friendly, just spring Dominic Ferrelli. Bring him? Turn him loose. Sure. Bring Pirelli and you'll get the old judge back in one piece. If you don't do it, you'll get him back with his head as full of holes as a Swiss cheese. And we're not kidding. This is horrible. I can't stand it. Take it easy, sister. Take it easy. You know, Slat, I admire you tremendously. You do, Doc. Why? Because you've invented a crazier idea than I ever did. Just what do you mean by that crack, Doc? You don't honestly think the government will make a bargain with you. I sort of think they will, Doc. I sort of think they will. But what if they don't? It'll be just too bad for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Well, why wouldn't I like to give that judge a going over? <laughs> Louis got a sort of a sort of a grudge against the old guy, Doc. Why well, wouldn't you have? Louis temperamental, see? He gets bored. Either. So he says to the old guy and his clerk, he says, Can you play poker? He just says, Sure. So they play poker from six in the evening to five in the morning. 
<laughs> what do you know? If the old judge don't win, all Louis do. They rung in a call back on me. That's how they've done it. They're a couple of crooks. Are you accusing the Lord Chief Justice of playing poker with Mark Card? He won my dough, didn't Shut he? up, Louis. Okay, boy. Not that I blame Louis much. The things I've had to take from that judge. Well, that's where you come in, Doc. I was just wondering about that. Which one of them is... Uh... Hurt? Nobody hurt. Not yet. Then what the devil do you want with me? I want them kept quiet so they don't keep trying to escape. <clears throat> we can't get tough with them, not until I get Pirelli and my 14 Gs. And I want you to give them a hypodermic or something that'll keep them out cold for two days. Can you do that? Why, yes, I, uh, I don't know. I, I suppose I could. Oh, uh... no, for heaven's sake, be careful. Now, what do you use to dope them? Well, under the circumstances, and uh, considering all the um, factors involved, I think I should use, uh, I should use morphine. Well, have you got any morphine in that black satchel? Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Plenty of morphine, I... I always go about equipped for these little emergencies. Well, then open the satchel. Come on, open it. Uh, well, there you are. Dozens of little bottles, anyway. Now then, Doc, which one of them bottles is the one that has the morphine in it? I, the... The fact is, that. Come I on, come I... on, which one is it? Listen, boss. Louie, how many times do I have to tell you to shut up? Yeah, but it's the midnight news. The news on the radio. You said you wanted to hear it. It's after midnight now. Why didn't you tell me? It's all right, boss. I switched the radio on. Well, then keep quiet, all of you. A couple of seconds now, you're going to hear some mighty sweet news. I wonder. So do I. Quiet. And that's us, Anna. The campers, stated Superintendent Hadley of the CID, seem to entertain a belief that no sentence can be passed on a criminal except by the judge who tried him. Whatever may be the law in certain American states, this is not the case here. Dominic Forelli, alias Dominic Stevens, was today sentenced by Mr. Justice Stoneman to 14 years hard labor and this evening entered Dartmoor Prison. Why, that's One moment, please. Don't cross a lawyer, too. Take it easy, boy. Look Take it, it easy. Jelly. He's as white as a ghost and his mouth is twisting back as though... Here is a bulletin just received. Scotland Yard Flying Squad cars, assisted by the constabulary of a county which for obvious reasons cannot be named, are closing in on the two kidnappers believed to be men already wanted in the United States for murder. That's us, Will anyone who has any further information about these men whose descriptions follow communicate with New Scotland Yard, telephone number Whitehall 121. Just wait till I get my hands on it. That's all right, boys. Everything's all right now. I turn it off. I turn it off. Can't do more than turn it off, Louis. I'll fix that thing. Hey, wait, I've got to do, boss. Hey, don't bust the radio. Hey. Oh, you hadn't on the bust of the radio, boys. Now we can't get any news. We've had our news, Avery. Come on, put that light out. I want to look out the window. Oh, they're closing in. Patricia, you see, I can't call you that. Why couldn't you have called me that weeks ago? Oh, well, putting that aside, I started it as half a joke. But I'm not joking now. I intend to get that rat face slapped if it's the last thing I ever do. It probably will be. But how are you going to? First, Pendleton King, my dear. He's got out of worse scrapes than this. 14,000 bucks gone! And the cops on our tail will be standing here yapping. You heard what that radio said, Louie. Yeah, I heard it, all right. Look, boss, we better lamb out of here while it's Oh, we will, Louie. Before we go, we settle things with the old guy in the other room. You can't get away with it, Louis. This is England. They'll hang you. So what? We got a murder rap a face in the States, ain't we? And I just as soon hang as fry? What about you, Louis? You said it, boss. Let me take this rod of mine, stick it against the back of the old guy's neck and... No, 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 no. No rod. That's too easy. Easy? Sure. One slug and it's all over. This guy rates special treatment. And that's where the doctor comes in. You know anything about poisons, Doc? I know a good deal about poisons. The customers like murder. What's that? Oh, nothing. Just a slogan in my profession. Look, uh, Louis, do you remember the time Johnny Presco was running the old Third Avenue Social Club? Yeah. And Mike Delaney talks out of turn? And they feed him some white stuff called, uh, Strychnine? Oh, yeah. And sit around and light cigarettes and watch him die. It took four hours, Doc, and you could hear the rats screaming as far as 81st Street. Now, wait a minute. That's you, Carl. I can't, huh? We'll see. You got any of that white stuff, Doc? Well, I... Come on, I'm, I'm you've right. got something I, I in that I... bag that'll make the old guy squeal now, haven't you? Why, yes, I, I suppose well, I listen, have, but... Listen, I'm... get this sure. You can do it the hard way, Doc, or you can do it the easy way. Louis gets to work on you. Maybe you'd be smarter to hand the stuff over right now. What do you say? I, uh... Listen, boy. Listen. <clears throat> What's the matter, Seth? Troubled by the heat? It is hot in here with all the windows sealed up. That sounds like planes. It is planes. British planes going over to put the heat on Germany? No such luck, old boy. German planes coming to bomb us. About, uh... About a dozen Heinkels flying 20,000 feet up. Mm-hmm. 
Very keen ear, Miss Phillips. Say, I'd say not over 15. That's the first wave, set. There'll be another wave in a minute or two. But you needn't be alarmed. They're going somewhere else. They only... Jack, Louisa! The way I heard you force them under the table already. Only a little visiting card, Slats, and fully a quarter of a mile away. Put out that light, please. Pull that curtain back off the window. Yeah, but what's that? See what you can see. Okay. Do what I tell you, big luck. All right, all right. can't see a thing. The sky's as black as pitch. Oh, look over there. Well, what is it? It's a light, boy. Funny kind of a white light. Up there over the tree. It's not very steady. It starts and then stems. And then it starts and stems. Only a basket of incendiary bombs, Louis. Incendiaries, eh? What is it, Jerry? You got an idea? Louis, this is just what we've been waiting for. Those Scotland Yard cars are going to get held up until we can settle things with those guys in the other room. Come along with me. Why don't you two lugs get smart? Jerry. What's that? You don't want to have your neck cracked on a rope, do you? Or burn in the electric chair back what home? What are you getting at? Why not take advice from somebody who's been killing people in a professional way for 15 years? I'm not in the mood for gags, Doc, but keep on talking. This law chief justice and his clerk, what do they look like? Well, the judge is a little guy with a bald head, like me. And the other one is a big guy with a punch-drunk pan, like Louie. Why? I thought so. I've seen that photograph. When the next wave of planes comes over, and it will, why shouldn't an incendiary bomb hit this house? You mean you think I ain't too safe here? Be quiet, Louie. Go ahead, Doc. In other words, you leave the law chief justice and his clerk tied up in the other room. Then all you have to do is to set fire to the place. Justice cheated, Medlington gangsters die and blaze. Jerry Hawkstone, have you gone crazy? They may catch you eventually, yes. But it'll give you a few days' start. Hey, maybe you got something there, Doc. And it's got to look good. This house must go up like a piece of paper in a furnace, past any possibility of being put out. Yeah, and that's the catch. Why so? Well, this house is in the middle of a swamp, see? It's as damp as your own climate. You couldn't make it burn with a blowtorch. Oh, yes, you could. Aren't you forgetting the cleaning fluid? Cleaning fluid? In that other room, you've got two gallons of cleaning fluid. That's benzene, a derivative of petrol. Soak every inch of the floor of that room with it, every inch of it, mind, and the place will go up like tinder. Well, it's worth a try, Louis. Turn on your flashlight. Okay, boss. And, uh, what about you two, Doc? Afterwards? We're accessories, aren't we? Are we likely to talk? Better put a couple of slugs in them, boss, and drop them on the road. What's one or two more bumps in a spot like this? Maybe you're right at that. Well, anyway, Doc, thanks for a swell idea. You heard what the doc said, Louis. Get going to that cleaning step. Both of you had better do it. I'm warning you. Oh, why? Hear that? Because there isn't much time. Here they come. You can't have a fire stop after the last wave of planes has gone over. Well, maybe you got something there, too. But I'll just take a little precaution first. What are you going to do? These are handcuffs, sister. Two of the neatest pair of cuffs we ever swiped off a dumb cop. Oh, well, just lock your arms around the back of the chair... Like this. And the doc's arms around the back of his chair. Like this. And we'll get going. Come on, Louis, through the curtain. Okay, I'm coming, boss. Bye-bye, Mr. Hawkstone. And your lady friend. Be saying you're in a funny papers. Or in the morgue. <laughs> be long now. They must have everything in there soaked with that benzene by now. Jerry, I know you can't be completely crazy. Many thanks, my dear, for the qualification. You're right. They have soaked the place with benzene. And if they strike a match before... I know, I know you, you've got some kind of a scheme, but do you think it'll work? I don't know, my dear. I thought of it once for a story. Oh, you and your story. Me and my stories, as Louis will put it, may save our hides yet. But suppose it doesn't work. Then we're done for. What are you trying to do? There's a place to miss, boss. Yeah, I got Listen, Fisher. It's not working. But, but, but it's got to work. What's got to work? Four, no, five minutes. Must be at least that. They've, they've been pulling out that benzene an inch at a time all over What's the... That? What's that? Listen, listen. What's that? What's the matter, you big lad? Can you stand up? And then stab me, boss. It's working, Patricia. I think our friends are licked. No. No, they're not. Slats is coming back. What? What the trick are you? Trying to pull, Doc. What's the matter with Louie? What's the matter with me? You've lost the game, Slats. You're finished. Okay. I'm finished, am I? It's the benzene fumes, old man. To pour out a lot of cleaning fluid in an airtight room like that one is practically certain death. 
You know, Slats, you ought to learn more about crime. <coughs> no, you won't, Slats. You can't reach your gun. The fumes have got you. You can't move your arms or legs. Your eyesight's going. In one second more, you'll be... Got him. Dead to the world. You mean... It worked, Patricia. It's practical. It worked. Are you trying to tell me that you killed those two men? Not necessarily. Listen. That sounds like cars. Probably police cars. We're just about to be sensationally rescued, just like fiction. Jerry. Jerry. Come on, Abigail. Come on in and get us, you lug. Don't talk like Louie or we'll get a bullet through the head yet. Yes, that is a thought. We're prisoners. We're victims. This way, please. It's a sergeant. And I was never so glad to see a uniform in my life. Here now, here now. What's going on in this place? Louis Miller knocked out in that room? And blimey, if it's not Slats Kelly knocked out in this room. Just a couple of mugs I polished off, Sergeant. All in the day's work. You mean they're dead? They'll be all right if you drag them out in the open air. Oh, you. I recognize you. You're the writer who was kidnapped tonight. Yes, and you will find the other snatches in that room. But first of all, have you got a key that'll unlock regulation police handcuffs? I certainly have, sir, and I'll get you loose in a jiffy. Never mind me, Sergeant. Never mind my handcuffs. Get this lady free. She's the one I'm concerned about. You know, that's awfully kind of you. It's something practically chivalrous. Chivalry, my eye. There you are, young lady. Have you got your notebook and pencil in that handbag? You don't want me to take dictation now. A true artist, madam, takes no account of time or place. Are you ready? Yes, Mr. Hawkstone. Well, you admit now that my plot is practical. Yes, Mr. Hawkstone. Now then, The Income Tax Murder by General Hawkstone, Chapter One. But, Mr. Hawkstone... Just as Big Ben was striking midnight, a hooded face looked into the window of the luxurious study occupied by the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Full stop. The hooded figure chuckled as it softly lowered inside the window a large tin of cleaning fluid. New paragraph. The Chancellor himself was hard at work devising a new scale of income tax. But Mr. Hawkstone, that's a completely different story. I thought you were going to murder the Lord Chief Justice. Haven't you any professional taste? How can I murder the Lord Chief Justice if I just saved his life? So ends The Customer's Light Murder, starring Roland Young with Peggy Conkland. Tonight's tale of suspense. This is your narrator, the man in black, who conveys to you Columbia's invitation to spend this half hour in suspense with us again next Tuesday, same time, when our story will be The Dead Sleep Lightly. William Spear, the producer, John Deet, the director, Bernard Herman, the composer, conductor, and John Dixon Carr, the author, elaborated on tonight's suspense.